Albertson. Martha Smirsky. Okay. Liz Pritchett. Hannah Smith. Seth Mitchell. And Meredith Crandall here as staff for the committee. And Mike Miller is also here, going to try to manage the participants. Okay. Then I will, does staff want to review the meeting procedures and process? Yes, I think that would be a great idea. And I just realized all you, you can see for me is the meeting room. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this may be a little long. We're gonna shorten it up as we get used to the process, but we wanna make sure that anybody who is attending, um, especially members of the public who might not have had a chance to review the remote meeting procedures, get all the information, and anybody who's watching um, through ORCA, through the live streaming, might be able to then call in and get into the system. Um, so uh, due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 120 and Act 92, the Design Review Committee is authorized to meet electronically in accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. Therefore, um, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, the design review committee is providing public access to the meeting by hosting a video conference meeting, including both video and telephone access options with additional access offered through live streaming of the meeting. We are using Zoom meeting for, for this um, all members of the design review committee have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if it desired participate. You, anyone who's listening on the live streaming can join the zoom meeting at there's a I guess I'll have to read the link right now but in future it's posted on the agenda on the city website. Um, so it's zoom.us forward slash J forward slash nine two eight, three, four, two, three, two. Um, actually, you know what? If you're on the live streaming, it is right here on the shared screen. I'm not gonna read that all off. It's right here, you can copy it down um, as well as the meeting ID and password um, and the phone number if you wanna just call in via phone. Um, we pre previously gave notice to the public of information for accessing this meeting um, on the city's website. It's at montpelier-vt.org um, forward slash 1164 forward slash pending dash applications dash four dash public hearings dash hearings. Uh, sorry, four dash public dash hearings. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting, please email the meeting moderator, Mike Miller at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. Um, further, if you're having difficulties while accessing the video conferencing features in Zoom um, or otherwise have questions while you're logged in via Zoom, you can message Mike through the chat function in Zoom. Please try and keep those chats, if possible, public, however, so you can send them to everybody so that they get recorded. And then, um, sorry, one second, I'm trying to see everything at once. Um, uh, when you log into the meeting, you'll have an opportunity to tell the moderator which applications you wish to comment on. When the chair announces that the time for public comment on an application arrives, the moderator will unmute members of the public based on the order they submitted their intent to comment. Um, if you are interested in speaking and had not said you would like to speak previously, please raise your hand if you're on video um, or if you're on phone, you can unmute yourself briefly and state your name and city staff will add you to the queue of people who want to talk. Um, once the chair has recognized you to participate in the public section, the moderator will unmute your microphone and confirm that you can be heard. 
You are then um, allowed to provide your questions or comments. If you can, keep them to two minutes. Members of the committee will have the opportunity to respond or ask questions of you, and the applicant may have an opportunity to respond. The chair can grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments. And then after you finish speaking, your microphone will be muted again. Um, the chair will then call the next person to speak. You can provide additional input, but only after the chair recognizes you again. If no one requests to provide additional information on a certain application, the chair is gonna move on. Um, if for some reason we're having excessive problems with the public being able to access the meeting, um, then the meeting may be continued to a time and place certain so that we can actually make this happen. Um, please note that all votes taken during this meeting are not that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. Now I'm going to hand the meeting back over to Steve. Okay, before we ask for approval of the agenda, since we're doing this online, I will quickly review the agenda. The first application is for 79 to 83 Main Street. The Heaney Family LLC is applying for a review to replace 12 windows in that building. The second item on the agenda is for 105 State Street. Tom Lozon for 105 State Street LLC is proposing a new three-story building to be reviewed. And then following that, we just have the minutes from the March meeting, March the 16th. And based on that agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda and a second from the committee members? Eric moves approval. Martha seconds. All in favor of the agenda? So no. Aye. 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 I think that's everyone. And I'll just quickly ask Meredith Woods, did anybody make a, a statement or ask to be heard ahead of both of the agendas? First of all, for the Main Street agenda, was there any, was anybody in the, from the public asking to speak on that first application? I have not gotten anybody asking to speak on that application. Mike, did anybody sign, when they were signing into the Zoom meeting, did anybody that you know of ask to speak on that one? I don't, I think we'd have to open some of the lines. I, I'm trying to go through the names on the list here. Tom's an applicant, Alicia's an applicant, Andrew's an applicant. Fred would be in a Butter to the second. We can go through the application. We can go through the application first and then see if there any if anybody wants to make a comment. Yeah. So Tim, Tim Heaney, if you're there, would you like to give us some detail about your application? Sure. It's pretty simple. It's really a continuation of a window replacement project. Um, and so, so we've already put similar windows into the front of the building. They're just new Marvin windows um, that match what's coming out. I think the only two differential ones on the back, on the rear exposure, uh, there's one door on the second floor that we want to remove. Um, it's unnecessary to have that door going out to the roof at this point. It's um, a big heat loss and it's uh, an attractive nuisance. So uh, our plan is to put another window along that row to match. Um, and uh, it'll largely fill the opening of the door, but it won't obviously be quite as long as the door. It's going to be the same height as the other windows on that row. So there will be a, a wood panel below it to fill the difference, uh, much like we did on the back of the Savoy building. And then on the third floor, which is probably easier to see up top, there's an old window where somebody kind of filled in the bottom and put some bricks in there. Um, so what we'd like to do is put just two new, they're both attic windows, but we're going to put two new Marvins up there that would match the one on the right and get rid of the brick patch. So that's it. Okay. 
And again, the wind, the new windows being put in are a match of the existing ones. It's an Correct. insulated, insulated Marvin window with a simulated divided light with the spacer bars. Yes. Do any of the committee members have any questions or comments? Tim, are you going to save one of the old windows and put it in the attic for posterity? <laughs> Actually, we're saving a few. Um, yeah. Great. Any other questions or comments? If not, I can read down through the design review recommendation form. Is there anyone, do you wanna check the public comment first? Is, does anyone from the public have a comment? Okay. I'll read down through the form, and then if anyone has a comment after that, we can always listen in at that point. So the evaluation criteria, number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no change in this application. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. And if anyone from the public has a comment, we can entertain it at this point. Otherwise, we can go to a vote by the committee members. I'll vote yes, capital okay. approve, whatever. This is Martha, okay. I'll vote yes. Okay. Lance, I vote yes. Hannah votes yes. Seth votes yes. And Steve votes yes. So the application is approved. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, Tim. Thanks thank for you. participating. So Tim, this is Meredith. What's gonna happen is Steve's gonna get me a scan of the recommendation form that he signed. I will email that to you and you can either shoot me back an email that just confirms your you know, agreement with the recommendation form or you can print it off, sign it and send me back a copy. Okay. And then we'll be able to issue out the permit. Very good. Okay, Great. thank you very much. Thank you. And we can move to the next project, which is for 105 State Street. Is Tom there? I am. Would you like to describe your project for all of us? Actually, I'd like to, I think all of you know uh, Jay. Uh, so I'm gonna actually yield my time to Jay so that he can more thoroughly explain the project. Okay, good, thank you. All right, uh, let's see, a little earlier, we had, I, this is my sort of third Zoom today. We had a two and a half hour with the Department of Public Safety. I think we burned it out in our office. Internet was down. At the moment, it looks like it came back. I was gonna only part, be able to participate uh, Oh, with audio and Andrew from our office will be able to access drawings. But if you give me one second, I might be able to get back in to the new technology. Okay. Anyway, um, but uh, we've been working for some time looking at this new building with Tom, uh, three stories. It would be mixed use. Um, I think, do people see me? I'm to join video. Uh, hold on, I got to admit you. 
and then I'll sign off on my audio. It just came back on. Oh, what's that? Okay. That was uh, feedback from him having two accesses. All right. <laughs> there you are. Okay, good. Um, so we've looked at it's, it's sort of a postage stamp site. It's certainly an important one. It's kind of a transition between the state and the municipality. Uh, with, they have a mixed types of building and building materials, clabbered uh, brick granite. We felt that this was sort of a more important building of a little more stature, and we're looking at um, a combination of brick granite, which we'll get into in detail. I think. Uh, Meredith, really, do you want to share the screen with Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm Jay, saying, do you yeah. want to be sharing the screen at this point? Uh, well, right now you're going through the application. I don't know if there's yep. anything specific that one wants within that. We've been through technical review. They had a few suggestions, uh, clarifications, which we've gone through. Um, maybe, Meredith, let me see if I can get to share screen myself. Yeah, I think I need to change the settings, possibly. Hold on one second. Do, 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 do. Give me one minute. I see a, see a share screen on my screen, but. Yep, hold on. Try now. Okay, I'll try again. Cannot share screen while other participant is sharing. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Hold so on. You have to un unshare yours. Yeah, I think I do. Hold on. Stop share. All right, give it a shot, Jay. Okay, now I'm not seeing that option on my screen. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Trying to bring up our site plan. You may have to select a specific file to share. It may oh. not let you share your whole desktop. Um, yeah. Steve, while Jay is doing this, I just wanted to let you know there was a little typo at the bottom of the recommendation form. The bottom of the recommendation form for this project says that it, it doesn't have DRB review. It will have DRB review on the 18th. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? I'm seeing. No, no. No. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was supposedly sharing. Hmm. Andrew, you want to see if you can get to, get to share? I can share if that's needed. I'll just need permission though to share it. Okay, so I, sh I, I should have, it should allow all participants to share. Um, and it only allows one at a time. Jay, I can, I can bring up the landscape plan. Okay, see if you can do that. Ah, there we go. Uh, 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 the site plan, I think. Can you do the site plan? Uh, yeah, the site plan. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> So just a little bit of additional background. Uh, we find that we were four and a half feet uh, below the base flood elevation. And so we needed to lift to that. Plus Montpelier has added a requirement of additional two feet. So our first floor needs to be six and a half feet above grade. There we go. Uh, which certainly pre presents some challenges uh, to relate to the street. And as part of the zoning asks that one do that, especially for retail. Uh, so we are raised that six and a half feet and we've done some things to try and help mitigate that relative to the appearance uh, of the building. So looking at the site plan, so uh, you see 
State Street, the lower part of the page. And then up and to the left, uh, the street up between it and the, and the pavilion. Uh, it is anticipated that the first floor of the building will be a bank institution and there is an interest in having a drive through uh, so that that as one comes up the street and turns right there would be uh, drive through although we're going to access it from the other side. So if we now move along to the front, you're going to see our main steps to take us up to six and a half feet. Um, and then there will be another access at grade, which we'll explain more with the floor plans. And then we are going to achieve three parking places on the east side of the building diagonally. We've done it diagonally such that uh, we can be as narrow as possible and not extend into the right of way passage that is to the east or right of that. Um, as soon as we have any parking places, we need at least one accessible. So there's one handicap space in the lower portion there. And then that, as soon as you have one, needs to be uh, van accessible. So that hatched area represents the area that would provide for van accessibility. And then coming up the page, one would then turn left and access the drive through for the bank. Uh, which certainly, as we're finding these days, drive the banks that have drives throughs uh, are viable, and those that don't are not. Um, so that's kind of we, later. I'll show you landscape plan, which we've worked with Bob White, landscape architect. Any any questions on site before we maybe start looking more at the building? One question I had is Eric. One uh, question I had is the as you pull out onto or Taylor Street, uh, yeah. the site distance. Uh, I, I just wondered if some, somebody had really taken a close look at that because it seems you'd get your nose of your car out in the street before you could see uh, down the street. Well, I think it meets or exceeds the, the city requirements for distances between openings. Okay. Yeah. So, Eric, this is Meredith. Um, the Department of Public Works has looked at the site plan as it stands fairly extensively. Um, and they, because um, of where the building ends and then there's sidewalk space, um, they weren't having issues with this with the sight lines from coming out from the, the um, drive. <clears throat> I know it's not in our purview, but it's just something I noticed when I was yeah. looking at it. Thank you. There is a sidewalk uh, on the west or left side of the building. Primarily provides, there is a, a door at the rear there that's a second means of egress from the second floor, but would not be seen as a prime path for the public as you can't continue further north. Uh, they're, they're retaining retaining the pit at the restaurant and then uh, the access drive that descends down to the state parking. In our set, we've set the building back in front uh, somewhat in order to accommodate the change in elevations with this uh, staircase. The setbacks along the street sort of vary with each building. We are kind of similar to that of the, the back of the porch of the pavilion. Okay, any other site questions? I have a question. This is Liz. Um, yeah. I read through the, uh, you know, the information that was sent in the packet. And is that access supposed to be, access road supposed to be two -way, a two-way street? I thought I, I read that that was supposed to be a two, um, you know, two-way. Yeah. Well, it is. But it looks it like is. it only can go, you can't, you can't really get two cars. Uh, right close to State Street, it gets so narrow there. Correct. You couldn't, two cars couldn't pass simultaneously. It would be one and the other. And that's the way it was with the Gulf Station where they parked on the side uh, and would continue. It's interesting. I found, I know, which I have a document I can show you, a number of places, about eight of them in Montpelier, where that's the case, accessing sort of major areas. And it's just part of the municipal uh, arrangement. But 
uh, you're right. It would would two couldn't pass simultaneously. Right. That's the way right. it has been. Okay. Thank you. There is uh, Tom. Shall we review the opportunity here? Uh, the opportunity for future development, Jay. Yeah. Well, I mean, just a little bit of background as we looked at the site. Uh, I actually considered. Um, I don't know if you have a pointer, Jay, where you can actually point out. Well, the property line is just to the rear of the uh, parking spaces. You see the line moving uh, vertically up and down the page. That's the right of way. And as we looked at different siting patterns, uh, my first preference was actually to have the parking uh, on Governor Davis Drive. So I actually reverse the parking and push the building all the way to the property line, which is allowed under ordinance and, and push the building to the right all the way to the property, property line. Um, you know, looking, having a little bit of vision, the problem with me doing that is that if anyone ever decided to develop the large parking lot to the rear of the restaurant, you know, the restaurant in the rear of the property, John's Place, if anyone ever decided to develop that property, the fact that I had pushed the building all the way to the right-hand side and made the parking on Governor Davis Drive would preclude two lanes of travel and a six-foot sidewalk. So, you know, in theory, a few years from now, if someone decided to develop the rear of the property, we will have preserved two lanes of travel, vehicular travel, and a six-foot sidewalk. Obviously, it would involve some land swap, uh, so that's the reason we we went with this configuration, so that it would accommodate. You know, we don't we have no interest uh, in any of the property to the rear of ours. But if we did that, it would preclude anyone from, you know, gaining access to State Street from that lot. Jay, can, can, I, Jay, can I ask a question, Fred Bashara? Sure. Um, it looks like you're going to be entering the from State Street on the east side of the building and uh, the west side of the Vermont Federal Building, is that correct? Correct. Where would be the drive up? So you continue forward past the three spaces and then you'll see the block out of a, a, a car and stacking spaces in the yeah. rear. And the, the actual uh, window for the drive up, Andrew, if you can point to that, is right below his hand there. Now would that hinder the drive out uh, possibilities from the Vermont Federal next door because they're they enter on my land between 97 State Street and uh, the Vermont Federal and go around make a u-turn and come out along the side pull into a used to be a drive up and then pull out would that be interfering no a um, couple things one that drive up there it widens there such that cars at that potential location and stacking is beyond it. Uh, and then this would still be not into the uh, right of way lane. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, any other site questions? While we're on site, would you like to look at landscape or hold that for later? Doesn't matter. Thank you. We can look at that now, that's fine. Yeah, okay, so uh, here's a landscape plan. It's sort of the right-hand portion. We worked with Bob White on this. Um, we've pretty much filled the site, but one thing that we have, particularly with the building raised six and a half feet, we it's a little hard to sort of respond, and we also didn't wanna just have uh, sort of six and a half feet of concrete, so to try and mitigate that, uh, in the center, you've got the, the staircase, which has sort of two sections of rise. So that provides entrance there. On the right of it, we are able to, and it's allowed according to the floodplain requirements to come and enter at grade into a vestibule. From that vestibule, one would then uh, could take an elevator that would take you up the six and a half feet uh, to the main level and also to the levels above. Within that, uh, we would have access uh, maintenance access to a pocket teller, which would be uh, open from the sidewalk side. In front of that area, there are a couple benches. We're trying to create what in effect is kind of a mini pocket park. 
So there are two benches that oppose one another, um, and then a tree that is planted to the right of that. And then also further to the right would be uh, three bike racks. Uh, we are anticipating that we would match the style the city has been used for um, park benches and also for the bike racks. So there would be a, a tie somewhat to that. Uh, the tree would be planted in a, a great system, with proper soils. Uh, we would probably do some market, marking of the concrete to create a little bit of, of a different pattern as you see in those rectangles. Uh, there would be a, one other tree um, but beyond the handicap space. Um, and then there's a little bit of a ramp that provides access up to the, the sidewalk level and on into the building and one additional uh, bench at that location. And then moving back around to the front on the left side, we have two planters and you'll see these better in our elevations and perspectives, uh, but there'll be sort of a broad lower one where we would have the thought was sort of uh, annual or per perennials there that would respond to the seasons. And then with some uh, grasses behind them as a little bit of a backdrop to those lower perennials and then a winter berry against the building, which would provide a green color uh, during the summer and some red berry in color uh, throughout the winter. And that's kind of, I would say, is the extent of the landscaping. Uh, one other just side issue, which I didn't mention before, if you move along the side of the building, the, the east side, you'll see a couple doors beyond that staircase uh, the one of the few opportunities, but raising the buildings that can have be provided is that beneath that floor, we're going to have access for trash and recycle, which is accepted to be within the floodplain. So any landscape questions? And I think the species are indicated there as well as uh, caliper size or gallon for the winter berry. If not, shall we look at maybe the uh, front facade? This would be the State Street side. So that's on the right there. So you can see the planters on the left uh, and the elevation of our windows at that more than six and a half feet up. So we'll be granite with our planters and the sort of two, two levels. Uh, within that. These uh, renderings don't necessarily depict the plantings per se, but that gives sort of the sense of it. Um, we have a, so we're up to six and a half feet. And then as is sort of the pattern for most of downtown, we have a higher floor to floor from the first floor to the second, which also relates to sort of that type of, of massing, which we see larger windows on the left side that respond to the sort of a more retail uh, type of function. A pair of doors uh, on into the building after one has gone up the stairs. On the lower right, um, the door and windows there will have to be floodproof. Uh, to try and find uh, a door for floodproof that doesn't look like something you put in a prison is pretty tricky. We are able to find something where we can at least have a half light, uh, but they're pretty stout doors and frames. And that's just seemingly reality of responding to the floodplain requirement. We're anticipating an, a canopy over that area to provide some protection uh, as one is perhaps waiting to go in there. And that's where people would, would enter again to go to the elevator um, and the bank would use for rear access to the backside of a pocket tower. Uh, and then the windows above that is a small office that's kind of in an intermediate level. And then at the second floor, our windows are smaller. Uh, we're looking at an aluminum window with some operable, operable capability. We'd have a granite sill and sort of soldier course head so that there's some added interest and depth and shadow line to the windows. Uh, and then at the third floor, they reduce as often as seen within the district in height, but would still maintain the granite sill base uh, and the soldier course above. You'll also see that there are some banding on the building to add some interest to its vertical height. There's some corbel brick um, 
that we have at the sort of second floor and at the third floor, the, which intersects the windows at an intermediate height. We also have a proper cap to the building, which I think the zoning specifically addresses uh, as many buildings in Montpelier have. So there, this would be through a system of core building and soldier courses uh, of brick to create that cap. Uh, the, most of that, many portions of that front facade are granite. We're going to create a band around which could then provide an opportunity for sign band. We're not coming to you right now for sign approval uh, as that has yet to be determined, but would do so when that was appropriate time. Uh, any questions on the front facade yeah, or yeah. material? Hey, Eric, uh, could you explain your choice of the kind of asymmetrical windows? Well, um, you know, one, one thing we're trying to do is respond both to the combination of context of the historic buildings, but at the same time, make a statement of a contemporary building. Uh, as you probably, Eric, have found in the Department of Guidelines at times, it talked about that a building should be a product of its own time. So we won't necessarily want to just do exactly what one might see in the way of double hung or other uh, types of combinations. So this we feel makes sort of a bit more of that kind of a statement. Uh, yet responding to the context, not literally, but at least um, basically with material. So that's kind of where that comes from. Did, did any of the windows open? Yes, uh, you can sort of see a bit where there's a, a uh, V on the upper windows that's an operable portion and they will be fairly limited as to how far they can open as a um, an awning rather than a casement. I don't think opening a casement would look very good, whereas this will be sort of controlled and, and a limited amount of opening. The lower level ones will want to be controlling the atmosphere of air conditioning, humidity, et cetera. So those in the uh, lower, more commercial level would not be operable. Well, Jay, the only thing that bothers the one, not that they're distinctive and different, is the uh, their asymmetrical quality. Yeah, well, again, that's sort of, I'd say you probably don't, you see generally symmetry in the historic and a little less so, although not, not totally. I can find buildings, some of the historic uh, Richardsonians that uh, are less than symmetrical in, in the area. Thank you. They can, they can also add some interest uh, to the facade and a level of texture that is would be different if it were simply uh, mere punched openings repeating historic. I like the windows actually. Um, can you speak to the entrance canopy please, material and so forth? Okay, let's see. Andrew, I believe we we're looking at that one being a glass canopy, was that correct? Uh, it's actually, yep, yeah, that was a kind of initial starting point. You see a lot of sort of uh, historic glass canopies. Um, Boston and elsewhere, and we felt that this was kind of a fun piece to so have some translucency to it uh, to provide some protection. So that's kind of what we see that material being. I think so. It's it's sloped glass. It's hard to tell from the drawing. We can probably, uh, Andrew. We've got some pictures we could take them to, perhaps when we talk materials. Or you want to do that? Okay. There's some cut sheets we can show you. Find it. Those are actually not here. I think <clears throat> what we had kind of finalized on for those was that they'd most likely be a custom build and field. Um, as far as controlling the flow of water, there was, we would either be scuppering them off to the side and potentially doing like a chain drain into one of the planters um, so that they wouldn't be shedding on people walking in underneath the entranceways below it. 
you have a section detail through it? You could show? Uh, we haven't detailed any of the, the canopy specifically. I think we were just going off of a uh, um, kind of a cabled system that was back to the building. We could send um, you some images that would to... be similar. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. That can get you some, some similar precedent. Okay. Uh, back to the elevation. Steve has a question regarding the cornice at the top of the building. Yeah. Was there any thought to use a different color or different material along the top to sort of highlight the cornice as opposed to the break going straight up to through the top? Well, it would be primarily sort of a shadow line and textural difference. Um, I guess if, if one you do, do sometimes where there's a little bit of a brick color change, if one wanted to accentuate it more, perhaps that soldier course or a portion, um, it would make it a little busier. Um, and I think there's going to be a fair amount going on, which a fair amount of richness with just the uh, plain change, the shadow lines and, and texture. I think the question of once you start that precedent, then do you keep doing it elsewhere? Uh, frankly, I think it's uh, a little more elegant to let it just be that vocabulary. I agree with that. <clears throat> My only thinking was that most of the historic buildings in town, not that this has to be exactly that, but most of them delineate the cornice from the rest of the building to give it it's sort of a definition at the top, uh, whether it's material, color, or some, again, something to set it off. This building, the facade of this building faces south. So it's going to be in directly in the sun most of the time. I'm not sure how much shadowing you will, of course, depending on the time of day, but I was just not sure how much shadowing would occur with it. Well, it is south. It just depends on whether it's winter or summer. Certainly less than the winter. In the summer with the high sun, I think you'd have a line be uh, beneath each corbel. Um, again, I think you do find examples both ways in, in town, but I, in some ways, frankly, I think you would kind of uh, paint on and cheapen this to, to, to do that. Okay. But that's an opinion. <laughs> Jay, could you speak to the uh, material selection of concrete for the stairs as opposed to granite? Well, I think one was, uh, I don't know the durability would necessarily make a difference, but it's a fairly complicated combination. Um, obviously, uh, budget comes into it as well. And it certainly would be of a high durability, would use a very high strength concrete. And is there and, a possibility? Be, it's sort of a simpler construction and it can be sort of a combined pour, whereas if, with granite, then you need to have sort of, in effect, a second set of concrete beneath it. Right, understood. Is there any possibility that um, a center rail will be needed? Um, I think we're right in between as to whether from a code stamp it's needed. I think we're narrow enough not to, but we should confirm that. Also trying to hopefully have it feel, feel fairly broad and inviting. And then how is this facade lit? Uh, we are not planning lighting on the facade itself. There are street lights in the area is pretty well lit other than we would have um, when you go up the front stairs, there's a flat ceiling there such that we would have uh, some surface or recess lighting washing down on that step. Uh, and then there's, if you look at the, the door at the floodplain entrance, uh, there's a light to the side of it as well. But right. we, aren't, we weren't planning to shine light upon the building. And how about the sign band? And the sign band, I think, yet to be determined. I think perhaps it could simply be an, a... a a standoff letter, whether it's a brushed aluminum uh, that creates its own shadow line. I don't know if whether we would do as we, I think we did, uh, have done elsewhere where there's a lighting behind it. So you get that kind of ghost effect, but yet to be determined. 
I'm kind of thinking it's probably going to be an applied standoff letter, but we would certainly submit it. And can you speak to the, um, the glass itself, the color of the glass for the windows? Um, we may be looking at one question as to whether if we're worried about any south side overheating as to whether on this side we would do some solar shading possibly. So which would blue have some, or green would, would, glass? Which, I don't know that we've picked the color per se. I think you can, there within some of the solar band options, you can have a variety of tones. I, um, yeah, we really haven't determined that at this point. Do, do you have a feeling on the preference of, they, they are a little bit more reflective, certainly. Um, I forget the number, but it's kind of a gray, it's kind of a gray glass. It's a, yeah. Well, that would make that. it that would make it fairly neutral, right? We'd be we could what? look at doing that if we do the shading. It would be neutral rather than either. Uh, there are some tans, but blues. What color is the is the material for the window frames themselves? I um, I would say it would be a dark bronze, or possibly a black. When we redid the uh, French block here recently, it was which uh, black, which I think was quite elegant with the brick color. Would you um, tint? Can you hear me? This is Liz. Yeah. Uh, would you consider tint tinting the concrete to match the granite steps? The concrete steps to match the granite. I think we could. Yeah, I'm not sure it would even be that much of a difference uh, other than as a part of the rendering, but they, we could have them be fairly close, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. And Jay, what is, what is the final finish on the granite or does it vary depending on its location? Probably very somewhat, but I would think we would be, uh, have, have a certain amount of texture to it, whether it's a sandblasted or a flame finish but some, some finish, not, it's, it wouldn't be slick or highly polished, which also then after a number of years, you lose the polish. Right. Shall we move to the uh, west elevation, which is right next to it? Yes, go right ahead, Jay. Okay, so we wrap uh, the granite around beneath the other windows that are sort of of the retail size. Um, and then that stops as one is going on up the street. We do continue with the corbel banding um, uh, and both above windows as well as the granite sills beneath. One request that came out of technical review with the sidewalk right there, there was a concern for plowing and potential damage to the, the building. We have since, and we can show you a sketch where we're gonna, at the base you see right there, uh, that they asked that we raise the concrete or other treatment such that it would be more durable for that being plowed at that elevation. So that's what we would look at doing there. And, and Liz, yes, we could probably tint that to be closer to the granite. Okay. The last, the door on the left um, is an egress door. There would be no handles on it such that that would be exit only um, from the upper levels, emergency exit. And then as in front, uh, the windows um, at the top floor are not as tall as uh, the other two. And there's a series of offices toward the rear of the building rather than retail. It's also not on as much the retail street. So these punched openings are responding to uh, the function of the offices beyond. What are the um, rectangles? Are those recessed panels that are on either side of the windows? Uh, I'm not sure that's still happening. Andrew, do you have a thought on that one? Uh, yeah, know. originally those were intended just to be corbel recess panels just to break up the rhythm a little bit and 
help provide some relief to that elevation. I think in the end, though, frankly, I would not do it because they, they I'm not sure they seem to relate to things above. They might add more sense of opening along that facade, but I, I, I wouldn't. Shall we go to the uh, north? Okay, go ahead, move to the north. Okay, so this is where one would have come in from the left, moving to the right to the drive through, and there's the access uh, is at that location. There will not be a teller right behind this. This will be done by video uh, and tube. So that's what that would be. And then we have a canopy above that to provide some weather rain protection for a car that is parked there as they're reaching out. And the height response to sort of a required height uh, for this oh. function. Now this will be a, a metal canopy. So it's not, not glass like the other one. Um, so the height is a determined. It would be determined by a standard. I, I think we thought it looks a little high. Yeah. Aesthetically, it'd be nice lower, but I think uh, that responded to a standard so that. Yeah, minimum is 13 feet. So that's what happens on this side and then the east. You think there's any way to bring a little more interest at that canopy area down below it? Um, sort of uh, defining that area a bit more. Yeah, just curious as if you thought about that or. Yeah. Such as a uh, polisher treatment or something, such thing. I don't know. It, it just seems so nondescript. Uh, yeah, well, it is. You're right. Maybe that's a spot to, to uh, look at a corval indent as though it were yeah. window pl window placement. Maybe if, mm -hmm. since because of the low, because of the height, unless we raised up the canopy, uh, maybe it would be more of a size as just the lower portion of the neighboring windows as a pair of or two or three recessed corval. I, I think putting some kind of a surround on the teller machine would help make that a little bit bigger and stand out, or whether yeah. it's a bricks facing a different way or granite or whatever, or something to uh, make it look less like just a hole punched in the wall. Or make it more of a feature. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. OK. All right, we can look at that. Uh, east side. Okay, so then on the left, where you, you see the bike racks, uh, which will be forward of the handicap space, and then there's an ATM machine accessed there. Uh, this is all granite surround, and the glass canopy continues on around, so it provides some weather protection when one is at the ATM. Uh, similar ex exposure of concrete foundation along the side. There will then be a door which would provide access to the second floor. It also, unfortunately, has to be the heavy floodproof door. And then we're anticipating perhaps this would be a uh, opportunity for a building directory. Um, tenants at the upper levels would have the opportunity of coming into the elevator lobby and accessing their floors there, but there would also be an option if they didn't want to take the elevator to come in here. Uh, we would also come to you with the building directory uh, once determined. And then the uh, uh, canopy, I'm thinking would probably be the same material as that as the front side. The small doors to the right are those that I mentioned where, because of the six and a half feet in the air, we can do some short doors that would provide access to uh, trash and recycle. 
Yeah, I, I would say the same thing here that uh, making the door surrounds some kind of a surround on the door in the ATM, ATM because that doesn't look like a very inviting door at this point. If you're going to use it as a regular access, but uh, there's some kind of a frame around it. I don't think it matters much what it is, whether it's bricks or, or granite bricks that are just turned a different way or something. Mm -hmm. The windows above that you notice are not in line with the others, but that's because they're responding to the staircase behind it. So they sort of, as Alvar Alto would like you to do, have the, that form follow up function. So that's, that's what's happening there. Um, why don't we look, Andrew, at the perspectives? Uh, I think it's often desired to uh, look at the building in perspective. So we've, we've tried to model it within its sites, so as you can see it in relation to the streets and the surrounding buildings. So this has the, uh, uh, the southwest corner. It gives you its height in masses. And in the southeast, these are certainly the two prime elevations. So now you can see this in relation to the pavilion uh, and the tavern behind, as well as you can see the access to the diagonal parking. Uh, Jay, Eric, uh, does a pavilion porch uh... The, the, this facade is about in line with the brick part of the pavilion, isn't that what you said? I think it's close to it, yeah. We ended up being somewhat dictated by the constraints of getting up our six and a half feet, and uh, we weren't totally free with, but that, it, to a certain extent, yes. So if you're walking down the sidewalk in front of the Capitol or by Vermont Federal, you'd be able to see the porch of the pavilion? Um, you know, I'm not totally sure. I believe you would, but I, I think you'd see that protruding forward a bit. Thank you. Uh, and then looking at the other side. So this would be the northeast side. And then on the, uh, the right, you see the access lane to the uh, drive up. And we're able to pretty much match grade coming along and up there to that, which is the existing elevation of the street. And then you see the pavilion still is a certainly taller structure. And then if we look at the northwest, Then we have our sidewalk coming along, but as you see, the sidewalk is not going to be much of a future destination for pedestrians in that you've got the retaining wall uh, and elevation drops at the tavern and the parking lot beyond. So maybe go back to the southeast. That's certainly a prime elevation for the building. And we try to, on the southeast corner, create a bit of a sense of tower, but not necessarily taller, but a vertical element that also broke up, helps break up the building. So those, those are somewhat forward of the other portions of facade. Also the, the granite coming up higher uh, helps articulate that feeling of tower and separate it from the um, uh, bank, uh, the bank larger windows. I think that looks good. The top the, piece of the, it. Uh, we didn't keep the high floor to floor as one comes in to the elevator, uh, which puts an intermediate floor level. And so there's a little office that's kind of an intermediate level right above it, which is gonna be kind of a sweet spot. Uh, but that's kind of what generates 
those windows in their size. I think that's Tom's office. <laughs> By the way, from the illustrations on that side, the with the shadowing, if the windows can be tinted to closely match the color of the frames, it makes that, it makes the geometry of those windows a little less severe. Well, then they'd be, they'd be, the total opening would be a black opening. Well, it doesn't have to be black. But well, or whatever. Was, if it was tinted slightly towards that color, it softens, it softens that effect. Huh. In some ways, I think the opposite. If you look at the windows on the second floor east, see how the light and the dark? I like that plate. No, go on the right side and the east side. Yeah, right there. I, I sort of like that effect of having that little bit of glass show. And it's funny, you know, windows are, are interesting. If you look back at the tavern right now in this old image, they're black. But if you look over at the pavilion, because they're reflecting, or perhaps because they have their blinds pulled, <laughs> they're light. So windows in uh, do change a lot. I think, as you see a little bit, we may we actually be, be able to see through our building a little bit with some of the windows as they relate on the two sides. So I, I understand I, what you're saying relative to that being a, a, a different, uh, mix of pattern, but I kind of think it doesn't hurt it to let it be glass. I think overall, I, I, it's it's very well executed. I, one facade that really still um, is a bit odds with the rest of it, I think, is the, the back side where, where we have the drive through. It yeah. seems to be missing something. Well, I can look at some of the things you've talked about in suggestions. So again, that's it as it is at the moment. We've tried to res respond to the sort of combinations of materials, uh, openings, et cetera. Actually, I'm looking right now at the pavilion, you see some of that uh, intermediate corbel banding. <laughs> And and it, it certainly its its top being a mansard is different, but its its cap is just brick, and there's no change of color or material. It blocks the view of that blank wall in the back of the pavilion. Yeah, I heard a rumor that they were talking about putting windows in that. Well, the tenants hate being on that side of the building. So at this point, uh, you would write your findings and or suggestions for which, to which we would then, unless you just give us approval, that would work. The only things that have really come up so far was that there was a suggestion to make the concrete color match as closely as possible to the granite color. Yeah, and then, and then the that. only other optional, again, after option uh, suggestions were some detail around the door uh, and directory on the east side to make it look a little more attractive, a little more inviting. And then also something, some other detail to enhance the appearance of the canopy on the north side where the drive up is. Right. That's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, and Steve, the color of the glass and the detail of the canopy and some, some of the incidentals, the signage, once you get to that point. I'm sorry, the color of the glass, what on the building or the which side or which detail? The windows, the windows, and then the, the, the canopy detail. So Seth, this is Meredith. Um, yeah. Just to check, so are you leaning towards, so the, the my understanding was you, we were all, and not we were all, but the people were talking about having the window glass tinted, um, something a little, you know, maybe on the gray side. Um, 
And then Seth, did you want to see more detail on that front canopy or just have it have more and have it come back? Was that what you were leaning towards? I don't necessarily need to hold it hold up the project. No. Okay. But some to have that front canopy, have there be more detail to it. It was more of just understanding the detail. Yeah. yeah. I think the what we're looking at, they're sort of segmented portions of glass and frame so that it had some levels of interest. Um, I mean, I think I understand what you're what you'd like to see, but I'm, I feel fairly confident that you'd be comfortable with it. Does it slope at all, Jay? That canopy? I think. Let's see. Were we sloping this one? It would have it would have to slope a little bit just to control water flow in the direction but, that we wanted to. But then we would con control it such that it, we we talked about, as he mentioned, maybe even something like a rain chain at the edges. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about snow too. Snow would primarily stay on. It's it's only a slight slope. Fortunately, it's it faces south, so the sun will do a lot of the work to keep it clear. Yeah. Seth, did you want to add anything in the recommendation form regarding window tenting and, and where were you talking about the window or glass tenting? Was that in the windows or the canopy or, or what, were you, what did you want to detail? Well, the windows in particular. Um, and Seth, that was if we were looking at some sort of solar shading, not necessarily you wanted it tinted, but if we tinted it, what it would be. Does that sound correct? Right? Correct. Yeah. That sounds fine. I think uh, water control is really important on that canopy so it doesn't drip on the sidewalk when the snow melts. Uh, and that would make an icy spot. Uh, yep, it's a, certainly need to be addressed that. Seth, how did you want the wording to be written on the recommendation form regarding the window tinting? Uh, if if solar ban is used, what what uh, you know what tint is proposed? Was that a was that a, a question or a recommendation of a certain tint? There's the I mean, I'd, I'd prefer a neutral personally, but that's just my take on it. Leave that up to Jay. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. That's fine. It doesn't introduce a whole other element. Okay. Anybody else have any other comments about any portion of the application? Any questions, comments, suggestions? All right, I just a, a comment. I, I think it's a, a Great job of making a building fit on a really tough site. Yes, it was quite a challenge for that spot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah every inch was accounted for. And another comment, I, I do like the asymmetrical window look. I think it adds quite a bit to the building. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone from the public have any comment at this point? Mike or Meredith? I haven't had anything, anyone come through with questions to me. Um, 
The only question that we had was um, from our um, minute taker who just wants to make sure we capture Patrick's last name if he wants to make sure that his name is included on the, on the, uh, in the minutes. And he can either speak up or he can put it into type into the chat and I can get it to Tam. That was it. Yeah, Mike, this is Meredith. I was having, I was trying to get Patrick unmuted, but. Oh, uh, I think I am now, am I? Okay, yeah, Patrick. So what's your full name? It's Patrick Malone. M-A-L-O-N-E. Oh, oh. Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Pat, I should have realized it was you. Sorry. Does anyone else have anything to add or should we go through the recommendation form? I think it's a successful job too, just to add my comment. Okay, then based on everyone's comments, uh, we'll run through the criteria Criteria number one was preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed project is in the historic district or involves an historic structure. It is in the district and everyone found it acceptable in its design. Again, considering the challenges presented, it, it seems to be a very nice job. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping with the district, acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. The suggestions were a recommendation was that the concrete materials on the building facades would be color tinted to closely match the granite material on the remainder of the facade. And then several suggestions were optional changes were detail around the east side door and directory to enhance its appearance and make it more inviting. Suggested architectural detail to enhance the appearance of the north side canopy, whatever that might be. And again, that's just an optional change. And there was a su set suggested a neutral window tinting if tinting was required for solar issues. I have also suggested that around the uh, uh, the drive up the actual metal piece of it, there'd be some kind of a decorative element to make it look very, that it wasn't just a hole punched in a building. Right, and that was to my point as well. It wasn't so much the canopy itself, it was what was below it. I like that idea too. So I will just add to enhance the appearance of the area below the north side canopy. So again, that reads architectural detail to enhance the appearance of the area below the north side canopy. And unless anybody else has anything to offer, do I hear, I would like to bring it to a vote? Committee okay. members? Eric votes yes. Approve. Okay. Martha votes yes. Liz votes yes. Anna votes yes. Seth votes yes. 
And Stephen votes yes. And again, this would come before the next development review board meeting. When would that be, Meredith? Uh, that is May 18th. And unless anybody else has anything to offer, I would like to uh, congratulate Tom and Jay for a nice job done. Thank you, we're looking forward to it. When do you plan to start construction? Oh, well, that's to ask Governor Scott. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> You know, it's and, and I want to thank all of you for the accommodation. I, you know, uh, this is my first Zoom meeting of this type, and um, it's definitely not the same as you know all being a, a, in the same room and uh, being able to communicate with each other. Um, but as I said, you know, in the beginning, I think it's important that we keep these projects moving. So, to answer your question, sir, you know, as, as soon as we can. Well, good, and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. I want to just thank uh, Andrew McCullough from our office. He's responsible for these renderings. Well, good, thank you. Great, thank you all. It's uh, an interesting experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has been. <laughs> thank um, you again. Thank you. I will be in touch with the um, recommendation forms once I have them from Steve. And then that will be incorporated into the staff report before the more before as part of the May 18th DRB hearing. Okay. And at the moment, you're thinking that's going to be Zoom and public, or you're not sure yet? Um, I would ask that you all plan on attending via Zoom, um, even if the stay at home order is lifted at that point we're going to need to keep it zoom as much as possible um, and only have the in-person open for if somebody from the public needs to access and for some reason can't get into zoom from home um, because we can't there's no way to space everybody out all the the development review board members there's no way to get them six feet apart from each other and if there are members of public there would you be able to project a screen share so that people can see what we're talking about? Yep, so the what you see right now with the conference room, right? Yeah. If you look at my picture, what we should be able to do is project a screen share onto that big screen so that they can see what we're all looking at and they'll call in via the conference room phone at the big table. So it really, the, it would just be calling, there'd be some physical presence? I'm not sure I understand who. If there's a member of the public who can't otherwise access via Zoom from their home or their place of business, they could come in. Then they could come in if, um, depending on you know the stay-at-home order and where that's all fitting at that. Yeah. Point. Okay. Okay. But the board itself would be by Zoom. The board itself, and preferably all of the applicants, and we're going to try and push as many of the members of the public as possible to do it all via Zoom from their own spaces. Okay. This is almost as good as late night television. <laughs> <laughs> you even have multiple channels to look at. There you go. All right. Uh, Meredith and Mike, thanks for setting this up on Zoom. Uh, yes. It really worked pretty well once we got going. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, and thanks to all the participants. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, and okay, the next, so actually, the next next item on our agenda is to approve the meeting minutes from March the 16th. I'll move that. And I'll second it. All in favor of approving the minutes from March the 16th, all the members who were present at that meeting, uh, give your approval.
Eric I, says yes. Martha says yes. Hannah approves. Steve says yes. So the minutes are approved. And again, our next meeting is on May the 18th. And unless anybody else has anything to add, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Is there, do we understand um, Alicia and Pat were on the line? Is there yeah. an expectation, Meredith? They, they, they were on because of their interest in 105 State Street. Oh, okay. Malone Properties is intending to buy the adjacent property. Okay. Nope. I was just, just wondering, I didn't know if there was something on the agenda that was missed that they had expected to participate in, but thank you. Yep. I would move adjournment. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank All you. All in favor, us. speak up. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any nays? No. <laughs> okay, good. Everyone in favor of adjournment? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thank Thanks, Steve.